Vital Biosafety Practices Working with biological agents comes with certain risks. You can minimize the risks at our university by following these safety practices. First, you should know that, besides your supervisor, there is a biosafety officer in your department. Before any activity with a biological agent, you must contact them for a risk assessment and authorization. Some activities must also be reported to or authorized by the Federal Coordination Center for Biotechnology. Biological agents can consist of or be contained in organisms such as viruses, parasites, fungi and bacteria, genetically modified organisms, clinical material of human or animal origin, and more. Some of these represent a potential biohazard to humans, animals and the environment. Organisms are assigned to one of four risk groups based on their characteristics. A risk assessment of activities with these organisms determines the biosafety level for the laboratory. Biosafety level 4 requires the highest containment standards and safety measures. When working with biological agents, you must follow these specific laboratory biosafety measures to prevent both accidental exposure and the release of organisms. The safety measures are governed by four principles. The first is substitution. Whenever possible, replace the biohazard with a safer alternative. The other principles concern technical arrangements, organizational practices and instructions, and personal protective equipment. Of course, all of this must be backed up by good microbiological practices. Store biological agents in leak-proof containers or vials and in designated fridges or refrigerators. The containers must always be labeled with the name, the nature and the acquisition date of the agent, as well as the name of the person responsible. Organisms in risk group 2 or higher must be stored in a laboratory of biosafety level 2 or higher. Unlabeled containers must not be used and must be reported immediately to the biosafety officer. Always keep containers closed, except for immediate use. Refrigerators and freezers containing biohazards must either be locked or located in a restricted area with controlled access. Keep records of the stock, check it regularly and dispose of unneeded materials. When biological agents need to be transported, only trained personnel are allowed to do so. For transport inside the building, secure the properly labeled container in double packaging. For transport from building to building, use a robust and leak-proof container as a third layer of outer packaging. For national and international shipping, consult the Dangerous Goods Safety Advisor from the Risk Management Department. Biological waste should be avoided or kept to a minimum. If biological waste is generated, it must be inactivated by autoclaving or validated chemical inactivation procedures. Depending on the biosafety level, it can be mandatory to have an autoclave in the building or laboratory. Check the inactivation efficiency of the autoclave regularly. When autoclaving, use autoclavable bags. For sharp objects, use the autoclavable, sharp-proof containers. After inactivation, remove or cross out any biohazard symbol. For disposal, separate liquids from solids and ensure safe and cool intermediate storage. For this purpose, use the original UN-approved disposal containers provided by the university. Label the biological waste and follow the university's disposal guidelines. 
Use personal protective equipment as determined by the risk assessment of your activities. Contact your supervisor for instructions concerning what equipment you need and how to properly wear it. If you notice damaged material or infrastructure, or if there is an incident, report it to your supervisor and biosafety officer. We want to protect your health and the environment. We're here to make your workplace safer.